Conduit 2 is a breath of fresh air in a genre that takes itself far too seriously. Breaking away from the shackles that made The Conduit an insipid chore, this unrestrained sequel addresses every concern from the first game with a gesture's aplomb. A tongue-in-cheek narrative that revels in preposterous logic sets the stage for the action, and the gameplay follows suit in kind. Varied levels, exotic weapons, and crazy boss fights make this a satisfying shooter all the way to the end. There's still plenty of problems, such as atrocious AI and bland multiplayer, but Conduit 2 rises above these faults. It has a style all its own, and though it has its fair share of issues, you'll be smiling so much you won't care. That's Andromeda? Damn, Andromeda is a stone-cold fox! Prometheus! Show yourself, you traitor! The Conduit was heralded for its outstanding controls, and the precision offered by the Wii Remote Nunchuck combo is just as impressive the second time around. Now the classic controller is an option as well, and though it's not nearly as accurate as the standard scheme, it's a welcome addition for those who would rather use a dual stick setup. There are some notable issues though. You may have to slam on the duck button multiple times before your avatar reacts, for instance, and aiming is far too touchy, even after you tweak the sensitivity settings. These quirks are annoying, but they won't impede your progress thanks to the laughable artificial intelligence. Enemies are utter morons acting more like vaudevillian performers than trained mercenaries, but it somehow fits within the B-movie vibe the game exudes. It's funny gunning down these fools, and because Condor 2 never pretends to be a serious shooter, it only adds to the charm. Your varied arsenal includes military staples such as machine guns and sniper rifles, mixed in with a healthy assortment of out-of-this-world armaments. The earthly weapons generally act as you would expect, but the alien ones look a lot more interesting. They may not always be as effective in battle, but it's worth checking out these wacky weapons just to see them in action. The best of these is the Hive Cannon. It looks like a squirming insect and lets you kill enemies in devastating fashion. Despite some neat looking weapons, the action in Conduit 2 is rather predictable. Fights too often erupt in narrow corridors littered with handy pieces of cover, and the typical layout combined with the aforementioned AI problems make this a functional, though derivative, experience. Confined corridors make up the bulk of your armed conflicts, but the level design in Conduit 2 is actually one of its strengths. Diverse level design is the most striking element. Each level has its own style, and just soaking in each world is a pleasure in its own right. But you don't have to create your own excuse to go exploring. Levels have a multitude of branching paths and alternate routes, which means you have to put a bit of thought into where you need to go next. The twisting paths are a welcome reprieve from the ultra-linear layout of most other shooters. There are a handful of boss fights in Conduit 2 which do a great job of injecting some energy into the mix. The novelty of getting into fights with these maniacal meanies more than makes up for their cheap tactics or inflated life bars, so it's hard to complain about their inclusion. The boss fights provide memorable moments that stay with you even after the credits roll, which is a huge improvement from the immediately forgettable events of the first game. There is multiplayer as well, though it's unfortunately the weakest part of this package. The core action is just not interesting enough to hold your attention for long. Everything has been seen in countless shooters beforehand. So for anyone who's played a modern first-person shooter, Conduit 2 feels like just another ho-hum entry in the overcrowded genre. It's a shame, too, because the campaign has a distinct personality that separates it from its peers. If the multiplayer could have captured the B-movie feel of the single-player experience, this might have been able to provide a hook to lure people into its fold. But in its current form, it hits all the requisite checkboxes without doing anything unique to distinguish itself. It would be easy to label Conduit 2 as a guilty pleasure, and in many ways that would be a valid description. But the most important word you should hold on to is pleasure. Conduit 2 is a huge leap from its dour predecessor. Get off my planet! Brushing aside its many faults provide a consistently enjoyable experience all the way through to the end. Sometimes you'll laugh at the game, sometimes with it. But the most important thing is that you'll be laughing the whole time. Ever since then, he's been trying to kill me, I've been trying to kill him. It's sort of a thing we have. 